Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nice. Today we're showing you a quick method to add lighting bloom in Photoshop. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump in. So here's our sample image for today. Really cool, definitely giving me a Queen's Gambit vibe and we've got these awesome lights in the background. I just wanna make them like bloom or glow and add a little bit more interest to them. So the first thing we're going to do is click on our background layer and we're gonna select these lights. So let's go up to select and then down here to color range. There we go. Now you can click all around your image and select different color ranges. In this case, I wanna click right here on these light bulbs and you can increase or decrease the fuzziness, basically the amount of effect you're going to have. Fantastic, that looks great. So let's hit okay. Now what we wanna do is basically just click on our background layer and hit control or command J, which is gonna duplicate that to a new layer. So I can just click and move this around and you can see I have my lights duplicated. Let's hit undo, now they're back in the original location. You can't see anything right now, but what we're gonna do is add a blur. I wanna first convert this into a smart object so I can change that blur at any time if I want to. So let's go ahead and right click here. We're gonna go down to where it says convert to smart object. There we go, it's got the little smart object icon. We're good to go. So let's go to filter down here to blur and we're gonna to go to Gaussian blur. There we go. Now with this Gaussian blur, it basically just takes that light and blurs it a little bit. So you can see this effect happening right up here. There we go, as I change this. There we go, let's hit okay on that. Now on this layer, we don't want this set to normal. We want this either set to lighten or to screen. We're gonna go with lighten for now. So it's basically adding more light to the lights. <laughs> now here's what the cool thing is, we're gonna duplicate this. So let's click and drag this to the new layer icon. There we go, and then this time we're just gonna give it even more of a blur. There we go, let's do it again. Click and drag that to the new layer icon, double click on Gaussian blur, and give it even more of a blur. So you can do this as many times as you want, but as these stack up, one, two, three, now we have this really interesting lighting bloom. We'll just zoom out because it's on all the lights in the image. There we go, boom. It's on a little bit of the light areas here as well, which I kind of don't mind, but you can mask that on or off if you want to. Now we can continue to enhance this effect by adding a little bit more color and a little bit more vibrance to the image. So we're gonna do that with a solid color fill layer. So let's go ahead and grab our adjustment layers. We're gonna to go to solid color, all right? And you can just pick, in this case, I'm gonna pick like a nice orange like that. We're gonna change our blend mode from normal down to color dodge. There we go. Now I know it's super duper intense right now, but don't worry, it's gonna chill out in just a second. So let's make that invisible for now. Let's just click here on our background layer again. And I just wanna select these lights one more time. So let's go to select down to color range. There we go, something like that looks good. And then with that selection active, all I have to do is click here on the layer mask. I'm gonna hit Control or Command I to invert that. All right, let's hit Control or Command D to deselect. So if I hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask, this is what the layer mask looks like. It's the opposite of what we want. No big deal. Just click on your layer mask, hit Control or Command I, and then it'll uh, switch it, it'll invert it. So now we can see I can color dodge these lights as well. The cool thing is because we used a solid color fill layer, I can double click here and change the color of this at any time. So if I want a little bit more of a yellow color, I can do that. If I want more of an orange or a red color, I can do that. So as I change my color, it's gonna kind of change this effect. And you really just wanna dial it in to you know, give the desired effect that you want. And don't forget, you can always change the opacity if you want to there as well. All right, I think that's looking really cool. Now it actually adds a little bit of color to my subject's face. Cause remember we just selected the color range um, here, alt or option to see, this is my layer mask. So in this case, like I actually don't think it looks that bad. Her skin looked a little bit uh, desaturated to begin with. So I think it's actually kind of helping the skin out too, which is kind of an unexpected result, but we'll take it. Another thing you can do is grab a curves adjustment layer. So let's go to our layer down to new adjustment layer and over here to curves there we go now with this i'm going to take my red channel and drag it up a little bit there we go that's more than a little bit but looks pretty good now we're going to hit control or command i to invert the layer mask 
And then you can just use your brush tool to kind of like paint little halos. So I am, let's take a look at our layer mask. Basically, I'm just painting little halos right around the lights. That, that's kind of the, the deal here. All right, let's go ahead and fill that back with black so we can see. But basically, I'm just painting little halos. It's just adding this nice little bit of color around these lights too. There we go. That just kind of helps sells that bloom effect and you can continue to add it and, you know, put a little bit on, on the wall around there. But it just gives it a little bit more uh, interest. Let's zoom into that and see. So there we go. There's kind of the before and after with that. And then, of course, it's a curves adjustment layer. So you can come in here and change it at any time, add a little bit more green, just give it, you know, a little bit better color balance with the image overall. Maybe take the blues down, put a little more yellow. There we go. Just kind of move these little sliders until you get something that looks good. Now, you can use any or all of these methods together, but it creates a really nice bloom that's focused around the lights of your image. Um, let's just shift click all of these layers really quick. There we go. And hit Control or Command G so we can see the before and after. There's a before and the after. Just kind of gives the image a little bit of like an interesting glow. Now, Obviously, it's really nice on the lights. It is happening here on like the chest pieces and my subject. If you don't want that, you can just put a layer mask on the entire group and then paint black on your layer mask over this stuff like in the front, okay? There we go. Now, if you wanted even more of an effect, you could duplicate this entire group by hitting Control or Command J. There we go. And you'd have like a double effect there. And then you could lower your opacity if it's like too much. So there we go. There's kind of a big before and after. Yeah, it's kind of too much <laughs> for my taste, doubled, but you can see that's basically how we do it. So the cool thing here is that you can actually target your lights and then blur that selection to kind of like grow that bloom and it really will follow like the actual shape of the lighting. So it's not just kind of like a random bit of like add some glow over here, it kind of makes the lights look like they're glowing a little bit more, which is that cool bloom effect. So now it's time for a little bit of extra bonus points. What if I want to make the whole photo darker except for where we added that bloom? This is super cool. So keep in mind this entire group has the bloom in it. So if I just click and drag this to the new layer icon, it just makes a copy of the entire group, right? But I wanna turn this into a selection. So the easiest way is just hit Control or Command E and that merges the group with itself. Let's go ahead and right click and just apply this layer mask, okay. So now I basically have this on a new layer. It's not exactly <laughs> beautiful, but all we need is for a selection. So let's hold control or command and click on that layer, which turns that into a selection. Remember, that was basically everything inside of this group now is a selection. We can make that layer invisible because we have our selection. We're just gonna grab our adjustment layer and go where it says curves, okay. So now we're gonna click and drag the curves and drag that, drag that down a little bit. And I'll just have to invert my layer mask. So let's click on that layer mask, hit Control or Command I, and now it's affecting everything except for the bloom. So we can just bring that down just a little bit, which is gonna enhance that effect just a little bit more. It's kind of like a cool, um, a cool thing you can do. And then you could even give like, I'm gonna just add a, like a tiny bit of blue to do a complementary color. Let's add a little bit of red too into that background color. So now check that out. So we have our original photo, we have the bloom, and then now we're darkening and coloring everywhere except where we have the bloom. I did delete that layer in the middle. Let's go ahead and group those two together. So here's our before and after. You can see it's just like a really interesting cinematic look. I think I did a little bit too much blue for here. So let's go back to our blue channel, pull that down just a little bit. There we go. Interesting cinematic effect that actually targets those lights, creates the bloom, and then darkens the rest of the image where we didn't apply the bloom, which makes the bloom kind of seem more strong uh, in comparison. So here's that before and after one more time. I think it looks really, really cool. And don't forget if you want to, like this area here, um, I think it affected my subject's skin a little bit too much. So you can just grab your brush tool, layer mask it away, and uh, you won't, you know, you won't affect the if it does mess up any skin tones, you can just layer mask it away and you're good to go. All right, there we go. You guys can download the sample image and PSD on Flurn. Follow the link down below. You know the deal, it's totally free. Hit that subscribe button and let me know in a comment what you thought about today's episode. I'm happy to do more lighting effects free tutorials. Thanks again and I'll Flurn you later.
Bye, everyone.